Coming up, I compare my two favorite ASO tools and how you can use them to decide whether to target a particular keyword for your app name or keyword field. Also, I share real data that shows you why it's so important to use both tools when performing app store optimization. All that and so much more. What is up App Nation? It is Steve P. Young, founder of AppMasters.co. And today I wanna share two of my favorite ASO tools, App Store optimization tools in the space. And these are the tools that I've been really using a lot for my clients. And I wanna highlight some of the data that they provide and give you real results on what data you can actually trust. And it's going to be some mixed results. It's a little bit teaser there, but I think it'll highlight why you kind of need both data, why it's important to have data from multiple sources. Okay. So I want to show you first and foremost, if you're, if you're new to ASO app store optimization, I recommend taking a Skillshare course that I have up. You can get started in that for very, very cheap. I think it's just a couple of dollars. If you want to get access to that course, it is a monthly fee. So, you know, if you don't want to stay on with Skillshare, you can cancel, but you just have to pay a few dollars to get access to the course. I'm going to link that into the link below. But if you're just new to it, go check out that course. I walk you step by step how I do app store optimization for my clients. Where this, what I want to highlight is just the data that both tools present, Sensor Tower and Mobile Action. So let's get started with this. For those who are familiar with Sensor Tower, you'll notice this is their, their dashboard. And so this is a paid version that I have, but you can get access to this tool for free. A lot of this stuff that I'm gonna show you, you can get access to it for free. So what you normally do within Sensor Tower is you have a list of keywords that you're probably targeting. So initially when I start, I say, I try to get a whole slew of maybe 50 to 80 keywords of that I might be targeting, okay? And then I put them into Sensor Tower. And Sensor Tower gives me this data. So I've already put in Paintball Rush. This is one of my games that was featured in China back in May. And Sensor Tower gives you this data. Traffic score, a difficulty score, iPad difficulty score, the number of iPhone apps, and the number of iPad apps, right? And the for traffic score, I'm gonna break that down. The higher, the better. So right now, obviously, Paintball Rush doesn't have a lot of traffic, but it's not as high. So it's a scale of one to 10, and one being the lowest. Difficulty is something you want low. So if you see something that's really high in difficulty, that's harder for you to rank well for that particular term. So 3.8 is this score's difficulty, which is somewhat in the middle, right? iPad difficulty, same thing, and the number of apps, pretty self-explanatory. So that's what I do. I try to get all this data for all the keywords I'm considering, and I put it into a brand new spreadsheet. Now, let's look at mobile action. So I've got my app on mobile action as well. Now, just to save time, here's where you're gonna enter all your keywords that you're considering. What I really love about mobile action is you can put in phrases, so, and then separate them by comma. So I've put in paintball rush, brick arrow, and then paintball as well, just a few keywords, just so you can see multiple keywords with data. And here, just the same thing as Sensor Tower, you get data from mobile action, but here's the difference. So search score, pretty much the same as the traffic score of Sensor Tower, Right, you're looking for a one to 100 now. So the, the higher the, the number, the better it is from a search volume perspective. But now mobile action has this, this column called chance. And this is the chance, I'm gonna hover over so you can kind of see it, but I'll read it to you. This shows the likelihood of this keyword to be at the top 10 in your apps category. So it's really the likelihood that you'll rank really well for the, the keyword. And as you can see, you know, here's what they have, their scores. Here's how my app is ranking for these keywords. And then again, here's the number of total apps. So I try to combine all this data into one big spreadsheet. And I'm gonna show you that spreadsheet right now. Okay, here is the spreadsheet that we put together. Now I generally have a whole lot of columns in my particular spreadsheet when I'm doing an ASO report, and you can get that on that Skillshare course or that Udemy course, you can see that spreadsheet. But this is, what I wanna highlight here today is 
sort of combining all that data and then really making a decision on where you should put that keyword, whether it be in your app name or your keyword field. So I'll go through, this is real data that I have from some of my clients. Now I've taken away what those particular keywords are, but I have put in here where this, the keywords appear in their app name, whether it's in the, and this is specifically for the US app store, okay? So let's go through some of this data so that you can see step by step why you should try to use both and how do you decide where the keyword goes, whether it goes in the app name, the keyword field, the Spanish Mexican, because hey, hint, hint, the US app store indexes the Spanish Mexican localization as well. So you're essentially doubling the number of keywords you can use. And I'm gonna show you that it works right here because I got real results to show it to you, okay? All right, so first keyword, this is a US keyword. And you can see from sensor tower data, right here, these two columns, B and C, are all sensor tower data. And then D and E are all mobile action data. And then here's the real rank. Now these are multiple apps. These aren't just one apps with multiple keywords. I pulled data from multiple apps. And I wanted to highlight things that had low difficulty, high chance, and where we'd rank versus all the different ones. So I try to pull them dump a number of different keywords to show you. Okay, for this particular keyword, Good traffic score, 4.1, according to Sensor Tower. No difficulty whatsoever. Mobile Action says 38 for their search score, so they're very similar, and then 100% chance that we're gonna rank in the top 10 for the app category, right? So that keyword right now for our client, we have, we're ranking number two as a keyword in the US keyword field on iOS, okay? The next one, it's in the app name, it's in the US app name. It has a decent amount of traffic score, 3.4, really high difficulty of 4.9. Now, this is where I got into trouble before because I looked at that 4.9 and said, I'm not going after that keyword, right? Because it's too hard to rank for probably. Now, but I started using mobile actions data now. So the search score is 31, which is very similar to 3.4, in my opinion, and then 93% chance of actually ranking in the top 10 for that particular keyword. So. I said, all right, I'm gonna trust this data. And plus the app name, the keyword was actually very specific to the app name. So I'm gonna use it in the app name. I'm gonna go after it hard and we're able to rank number three for it. So if I had just used sensor tower data, I would have probably ignored this likelihood. I might've ignored this keyword, but because I've seen the data from mobile action, I can say, you know what? I'm gonna trust mobile action in this case. Let's go after this keyword and it's relevant to my app as well. The next one, next US app name has a 4.0 score, so really good score, a 1.7 difficulty, which, you know, again, if I just based on sensor tower blank, this is perfect. I'm gonna rank really well for it because it has very low data. But, but the search score on mobile action is very similar, but the chance that we're gonna rank is 50% on mobile action, which is really low. I like to stay anywhere from 80% 80, 80 and up uh, if I'm using mobile action data. Right. and said 50%. And guess what? We have in the app name, so which means it's weighted, the keyword's weighted more when you have in the app name, and we're ranking number 79 for that particular keyword. So again, if I just use Center Tower data, I might have been wrong, but because I have mobile action data, I'm able to kind of decide, all right, this still makes sense. Now again, we're still going after this keyword, so it's in our app name, right? We're still using valuable character links, and if it's relevant, we're gonna keep it in there. But now that we have data, hey, maybe we switch it out and put a different keyword, utilize that those keywords fields a little bit better. So we had it in there because I wanted to test sensor tower score versus mobile action score. Okay, here's the last US app name that I'm gonna share with you. So 3.6, and I'm not gonna kill sensor tower this time, but it's a 3.6 score from mobile action search score, it's 36. So very similar again from a traffic perspective. The difficulty, however, is a 2.8, which isn't too bad, right? Like I like anything under three for me on sensor tower is pretty decent difficulty that I would target in my keyword. But mobile action says it's only a 67% chance that I'm gonna rank well for this particular keyword. So again, sensor tower now wins because we're ranking number five for that particular keyword. So now, see, this is what I'm telling you. Sometimes you can't trust just one source. And just think, if I was just using purely mobile action data in the, for this particular keyword, I might not consider it in my app name. But because I saw Sensor Tower's data and it made sense for that particular app, and I really like the traffic score, I said, let's go after it. And now we're number five for that particular keyword. 
All right, the last couple of things I want to highlight is, again, I repeated it. I said it before, but I'm going to repeat it again. The U.S. App Store indexes the Spanish Mexican localization. So you can essentially put English keywords, English app names into that localization and still rank for it in the U.S. App Store. And here is proof. And here's how we decided which ones are going to go, which keywords are going to go in the Mexican, Spanish Mexican app name and keyword versus U.S. app name or keyword. Okay, so for this particular keyword, really good different traffic score again. 4.1 on Sensor Tower, 42 on Mobile Action, 0 0.5 difficulty on Sensor Tower, and 100% on Mobile Action that we're going to rank in the top top 10 per 10, right? And we're ranked number one for it. Now again, this is not in the U.S. keyword. It's not in the U.S. app name. It's only in the Spanish Spanish Mexican app name. And we're able to rank number one for this particular keyword for this app. Why I decided to do that because it's relevant. I really like the, really the traffic score. And based on the 100% and very low difficulty, I said, okay, I'm gonna put it into the app name in the Spanish Mexican. Because apparently, you know, it's 100% and very low difficulty. Both sources are telling me that's a very high chance that I'm gonna rank really well for this particular keyword. And the same thing here, Spanish Mexican keyword, 3.5, on, 3.5 on Sensor Tower, 32 on Mobile Action, 0.3 difficulty on Sensor Tower, 100% on mobile action, and we use that as a Spanish, Mexican in the keyword field, and that's number four. Sometimes I like to put competitors' names in that particular Spanish, Mexican keyword field, especially if there's the really high chance I'm gonna rank well for it, like in this particular case. I don't know if this is a competitor name, but sometimes I like to throw competitors' names in there because I really hide it from everybody, okay? So again, this is what I wanted to point out, that hey, there are discrepancies between the two tools and you don't rely on just one. And a lot of the things that I'm showing you with mobile action, I believe are free, but you can get away with it paying for it. I think it's well worth it because you get all this data, and you're able to really decide what makes sense. And in the end, in the conclusion, you're gonna decide an app name, whether it makes sense or not, based on the relevancy. Just because it has a low traffic score and a high chance, doesn't mean you should always be using it in your app name or your keyword field because the likelihood that people are going to download it if it's not relevant people aren't going to download it just because they see your app it's it's not going to happen so you really want to focus on highly rev relevant and then low difficulty high traffic scores and the way i like to key it up is based on the relevancy if there's a really high traffic score i like to put it in the us stuff and then if there is a somewhat low difficult traffic score, but a really high chance in that I'll rank well and low difficulty as well, then I'll put it in the Spanish, Mexican Spanish. And if I'm trying to hide keywords that I'm using, maybe competitors that may be in the app name that I'm trying to get it weighted high, I might throw that in the Spanish Mexican as well. So that's it guys. Check it out. Sensortower.com is what I use. Mobileaction.co is the other site. Hope this was valuable. If you got anything out of this and you're watching this on video, leave a comment on my YouTube video. And if, you, if you're listening to this, go check out the YouTube video because you'll find some really, really good data. And that blog post is linked in that show notes in your favorite podcast app as well. Thank you so much for your attention. I'll see you guys on the very next chat. Bye.